those wildfires raging in the American West. There are now more than 60 of them across 13 states. The worst, the so-called car fire, you're seeing it right here. It's tearing through Redding, California, demolishing homes and creating a really dangerous and deadly situation for firefighters. One battalion chief calls it unprecedented how the fire rolled through the city and says weather conditions are creating a worst case scenario. And officials are now urging people in threatened areas to evacuate and not wait until the last minute. We have team coverage from Reading. Let's start with Rob Marciano and those dangerous conditions. Rob, good morning. Hey, good morning, Whit. You know, it seems like we just got done with last year's fire season here in California, which was nothing short of disastrous. And here we go again. Sadly, a similar scenes, nearly this entire subdivision uh, burned down by the fire. Just a couple of homes back there left standing. The washer and dryer still smoldering in this home. 500 structures, most of which are homes, have been destroyed. You get up close to some of these some of these cars, you see the force that it's required to blow some of these windows out, the metal melted, the aluminum melted as well. And you start to imagine just how frightening it must have been when these people got the call that, that they had to just flee their homes in a hurry to get away from these flames. I'm here on Turquoise Court in the Lake Reading Estate subdivision where we've been watching homes burn to the ground all morning. Here's one example. You see the car in the driveway, the metal just melted all the way down. That house just leveled by the flames. And then across the street right here, we saw a man come home and check on his home. All that is left is the basketball hoop. It's all just ashes and burnt metal. Alistair Sullivan says he was only given a few minutes to evacuate. As his house was burning to the ground, he was able to round up some important papers, but not much else. That's pretty tragic. I just, you know, you try to grab things that you think are important and things you're not sure are important. The car fire is still out of control and has destroyed quite a few homes in the subdivisions of West Reading. Directed energy weapons. Are they real? Let's take a look at an incident in China in 2015. In August 2015, two massive explosions in the port of Tianjin, North China, killed hundreds of people and left thousands injured. Be sure to pay close attention to the burned vehicles in China and all the other burned vehicles I'm going to show you. We physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental, however, in the laboratory so far it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing trillion watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions, and these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Even in the 60s, the CIA used this to uh, bring down monsoons during the Vietnam War to wash out the Viet Cong. Governments have been playing with, with this to. thing. Alleged to. Alleged to, right. Yeah. Now, we realize that for decades now, these governments have been alleged to have experimented with weather control, but nothing conclusive. This time we're bringing in the laws of physics rather than simply uh, waving our hands and uttering mumbo jumbo. <laughs> we're actually using trillion watt lasers now. And in the laboratory, sure enough, they precipitate rain out of water vapor. Sure enough, you can actually bring down electricity down the, down the beam. Lasers sound like the stuff of science fiction, right? Sound completely unbelievable. How could our military possibly be using those in future warfare? Guess what? We've just had a recent breakthrough, more great test results that are making lasers a reality. 
So it's called Athena. Lockheed Martin makes it, and they've been doing a lot of the pioneering in this laser field. Now, what's really exciting about it is that it's so hard to harness that much power and make it compact enough that it's actually going to make practical sense downrange. And they've proven that they can do that. Uh, recently, uh, they tested it against five moving drones, so realistic drones that they might go up against, with, uh, you know, enemy forces might send against us, for example, uh, or terrorists might send against us. Uh, and it successfully shot down all five of the drones. This is huge news because it means that in a realistic practical setting it's looking very promising so it could be ready to field quite soon. So when you see the movies or you look at comic books or television shows when you see the laser weapons they tend to be a color right red or green or something like that. Uh, real lasers one of the key advantages that they provide is that they are invisible you actually can't see them you just see this damage suddenly starting to blow something up. Uh, so if we take a look now at what the Athena did to a truck so we're looking at a truck engine and the Athena within seconds was able to beam right in there, heat the whole thing up, and burn through the engine of this vehicle. So if you can imagine if you were in that vehicle, all of a sudden, this hole would start appearing in your engine, and the whole thing would just disappear. That's what these lasers do. Now, there's some other key advantages that we should mention. Let me give you three of them. One, unlimited ammo. As long as we have power, we have an unlimited magazine. And downrange, of course, having unlimited ammo can be a huge advantage. Second, it's silent. We don't give the enemy any advance warning that it's coming. And then the third one I wanted to touch on is that it travels at the speed of light. So not only are we delivering powerful, 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 decisive effects, lethality, we're also doing it so rapidly they don't know what hit them. So if you could circle back to that example of being in the car again, that would happen so instantaneously, within seconds, you truly would have no idea what was happening. It would just suddenly start disintegrating, right? So what can we use these against? So we talked about the vehicle a bit. We talked about how Athena has just proven itself against drones. But in the real world application, our forces could use it against the drones. We could use it against aircraft. Uh, we could use it against vehicles on the ground, like we mentioned. Uh, we could also use it against fast attack boats. And in fact, Athena's sibling, Adam, a couple years ago, proved that it could eliminate these fast attack boats. So if you imagine boats start trying to swarm one of our ships, not a problem for this laser burns right through the hull. As you can see right there, it's burning right through the hull. I'm incredibly excited about this news, this great news about the successful testing of Athena, because it means that we'll be putting these powerful weapons soon. We could put them in the hands of our warfighters and give them even more powerful weaponry uh, to keep themselves safe and also to deliver the effects that we need. They can be used, laser weapons can be used offensively and of course defensively too to help protect our homeland. Think of our airports that might be under threat uh, from enemy drones. They could be used to protect our, we could use them statically and used to protect our airports. They could be used to protect our power grid, our, our nuclear plant. So there's lots of different exciting applications for this technology. There's no longer science fiction, but science fact. World is on fire. California, Oregon. Oregon had 119 lightning strikes a couple weeks ago. Uh, Yellowstone is on fire uh, again. And now we have Redding burning for three days. The fires are growing. They don't know how it started. Yada, yada. Crossing Highway 5. Never seen anything like it before. You can see here Highway 5 going up north. Uh, and also you may remember the Klamathon fires burning in Siskiyou County, which is directly above Shasta County. And we've also been heard that there are plans to burn up uh, Lake Tahoe as well. So I would expect that would come under fire next from directed energy weapons because we're clearly seeing the same type of protocol, the same type of MO, the same type of evidence. And now they're calling them fire NATOs. There's no storms, folks. They're blocking the weather off the coast as one Pacific Redwood. But look at here up in Shasta County, up in Redding, where, where Lake Shasta is. We're seeing the same profiles, cars burned and scorched to the ground, power lines toppled over. They're going to blame it on pg &E. They're going to blame it on lightning strikes, blah, 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 when you can see us directed energy weapons. Look at this shot, folks. It's a boat. It's on Whiskey Town Lake. I've been there. How can it burn the boat and burn and keep the dock okay? How is the dock fine and it torches the boat? Now look at the look at the uh, the bait shop sitting there fine, yet it torched the boats. 
again, directed energy weapons, the evidence is abundantly clear that we are under attack. And here we see the really super hot temperatures up in Redding, California, which is not going to make it easy for the firefighters. But they're saying these, these, the smoke is going 50,000 feet in the air. Look at these shark NATOs, fire NATOs, they're calling them now. Never seen anything like that before to a person. Now here coming up is a video clip of someone just coming down Highway 5 today. And look for the, look for the uh, uh, tornado, fire NATO, they're calling it in the video coming up right here. See if you can spot it. So as you can see, the entire western states is on fire. Again, these fires are starting out of nowhere. We do not have any type of weather. This is the same from last year that we're having the same type of attacks. But what I want to bring to your attention, folks, is this is a world war on us. This is a world attack. This is not some U.S. government attack or some Russian attack or Chinese attack. This is a coordinated worldwide directed energy. They control all the military. They control all the Air Force. And we're seeing the exact same profiles happening in Gatlingburg, Tennessee, Fort McMurray, Murray, Canada, in China, in uh, Portugal, in Spain, uh, in Santa Rosa, in Santa Barbara, in San Diego, and Redding, and Oregon. This is from the Goleta fires where only the homes were taken out, none of the properties. And here's from the Santa Rosa fires October last year where they hit the Arby's and McDonald's but left a gas station alone. And here's a picture of coffee now, Coffin Park. And as you can see the before picture, and then you can see the after picture, and you can see what's the devastation that's been going on. Here. Here's more proof positive blue laser lights, which people are reporting. We've got over, th we've got now at least three. Uh, separate cell phone smart cameras uh, identifying blue lasers on video one from a helicopter and two from uh, uh, handheld cameras as you can see right here this is proof positive we're gonna take this to the fire departments we're meeting with fire people now they know something was wrong and they've seen the videos and all the directed energy comments and they want to learn more so we're taking this to them you can take this video as well we also have the Santa Rosa Planning Department papers back from 2016 the exact roadmap where the fires hit in the Santa Rosa area match the planning rezoning for agenda 21 stack them and pack them green design walking no fireplaces kind of uh, communities with density uh, increases over a hundred percent planned on October 7th two days before the fires we have uh, city council members and now the Sonoma Media Design Group or uh, Sonoma Media uh, Group and the Sonoma Design Group the Sonoma Design Group is the uh, laser weapon companies organizations so here take a walk has the moon and you'll see the blue the flash there it is see the flash there it was this is another cell phone recorded as well there's another beam right there from a cell phone recorded prima facie evidence folks here it is <laughs> acre monster. These time-lapse videos capture the panicked exodus. Watches this driver struggle to find his way out. Fire everywhere he turns. You can hear the fire's jet engine roar. Others cornered by those ferocious flames and smoke. In Santa Rosa, the fires show molten aluminium running down there. Sidewalk as highly flammable pine trees still have green leaves on them. Cars melted into the street with green vineyards just feet away. Granite countertops, porcelain toilets, stone and brick fireplaces all turned to dust. Auto glass is vaporized which has a melting point of 2600 degrees Fahrenheit. 
something very unnatural happened here as normal wild fires don't do this but directed energy weapons or DEWs do Just let me ask you if this could not have been a weapons test of some kind for a type of laser weaponry. Just talk amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. There, got it. There you go. There's the green beam. I'll leave the link. But I also got to show you this. Uh, this is by Monk as I lay this is Lockheed Martin's Focus Cyclotron Resonance, say that right, Death Machine Technology, an amplified focus cyclotron frequency laser beam which burns at over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit and the California fires are burning at 2,800 plus degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, well, normal forest fires, guys, only burn at 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. So you do the math right now also they do do the laser beam because they're here uh, israel um, used a directed energy weapon okay in the war and then they also have the green ones so it's not like it's got to be a different color i'd say they're different ones for different colors you know what i mean <laughs> They do have fire really deep sort of, that's what they say, like a sandstorm, you know. But is this man made, you know? I mean the storm too. And the fires too.
just want to go over some basic facts with you guys about fires. The average house fire burns at a temperature of about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't hot enough to destroy most metals and earthly made substance. And if an item is well placed and small in size, its chances of survival increase drastically. Let's take a look at the burning point of a couple of materials. Glass burns at around 20, 2600 to 2900 degrees Fahrenheit, which is more than double the regular temperature of house fires or forest fires. Let's see what we can find out about aluminum. Aluminum melts at around 1220 degrees. Some alloys burn a little bit hotter. Uh, around 1900 degrees. Now let's take a look at what the National Institute of Fire Safety and Safety Training say what will not generally burn in a house fire. Jewelry, because it's metal. Silver coins, because they're metal. Filing cabinets. Steel cabinets. Steel filing cabinets are built to last so that businesses won't have to deal with the loss of important files after building fires. Many people keep personal documents and filing cabinets which are often kept in home, in home offices. And it says here that uh, mil me silver burns around 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go down to barbecue grills, cookware, some appliances, stone table, fire safes. Um, let's see, it says here about tools. Because the melting point of carbon steel is between 2,600 and 28 degrees Fahrenheit. And the melting point of stainless steel is roughly 2,700 degrees. So you're not going to see your barbecues melt. You're not going to see your ovens and your uh, most of your appliances. They're not going to melt. They'll be burned, they'll be damaged, but they're not going to melt. It's common to find an appliance or two that remains intact. There's chaos around there, but many appliances these days are made with stainless steel, which gives them a sleek and design durability. So a lot of people have these things, but the metal, the frame itself of these things is not going to melt. So let's take a peek at what happened here. Well, let me just show you some pictures here of normal house fires, what, what's usually left afterwards. There's a bunch of rubble and everything's black. Usually, usually the frames of the buildings stand. And there's a bunch of crap around the trees, or in, you know, around the place, buildings. This, the frame of the building stays intact. The, the entire building does not disappear. There's still debris. There's a huge debris field after these things. You see there's like gutters and stuff. And the wood, even though it does burn, it doesn't totally burn. Now this is white stuff from what they put the fire out with, but, but generally you see that all of these houses, every one of them is black. Now this, this car was right next to a fire and it still has glass. Its wheels are still intact. It was actually, this thing actually burned, but it didn't melt the tires. It didn't melt the glass of the vehicle. You see all the rubble? This is just rubble because these pl these places implode. They, I mean, the, after the the structure falls apart, it collapses. But you still see they're all singed. They're all black. And even in the forest fires, the, the trees themselves are still black. And you can see, you know, you have bricks on the bottom, and not all the aluminum siding or or, or vinyl siding melts. Look at these. This the structure, the outward frame of the of the of the houses still stands. But that's not what we see in these crazy forest fires. The entire things just disappear. Should should be visible to the people with eyes to see. Here's the build, here's this neighborhood before. And I want you to look, you guys, there's absolutely nothing left. You don't see any part of any of the structures anywhere. This isn't possible. There's something else going on here.
at a power of one watt. And if you don't want to use your energy to strike your match, you can just hold it in the beam of light. A one watt laser can light a match. Imagine then the power of a 500 trillion watt laser. That's exactly what they've built here at the National Ignition Facility in California, where engineers have just finished constructing the laser to end all lasers. Take a look at this, folks. See the stain, a stone block wall? It's all gone, folks. The heat had to be enough to melt the wall. Columns were melted. Wrought iron steel melted. No glass. 2,600 degrees to melt glass. No glass. How about metal uh, tires? We saw the rims, and there's no rubber at all on any of the tires. The rubbers were completely gone. Well, here it says in sciencing, if you put a rubber tire in a furnace, even a hot one, it won't melt. The tires are vulcanized, which means they're through a process that combines the rubber molecules with carbon and other elements to prevent them from oxidizing or burning. It's why hot rodders can burn rubber without setting anything on fire. used Panama as a testing ground for newly developed high-tech weapons such as the stealth fighter, the Apache attack helicopter, and laser-guided missiles. There are also reports that can't be explained indicating the use of experimental and unknown weaponry. We have testimony about combatants who died literally melted with their guns as a result of a laser. We know of automobiles that were cut in half by these lasers of atrocities committed by weapons that fire poison darts which produce massive bleeding. I think there's a high probability that there was a, a use of sophisticated weaponry merely to test it. Ramsey Clark, former U.S. Attorney General, has conducted extensive research into the invasion.